In this week's video, I'm going to be talking about flatting. I'm going to show you the correct way to do it, or a correct way to do it. I know a lot of colorists have a hard time finding and keeping good flatters, so that's what this video is going to be about. And if you don't know what flatting is, we'll talk about that too, so stay tuned. All right, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is K. Michael Russell. I am a comic book colorist, and I do these tutorials on YouTube full of tips and tricks and shortcuts and whatnot for how to color comics in Photoshop. And today we're going to be talking about flatting. So flatting is actually the first step in coloring comics. So what happens is when I first get a page in, it looks something like this, just black and white line art. Now I send this to my assistant or my flatter and they go in and I'm going to turn the inks off and they've separated all of these colors out into all the different sections, or they separate all of the different uh, items and elements on the page into different colors. Now the colors don't really matter. As you can see, this page looks pretty psychedelic, um, but what that allows me to do is to go in here and say grab her shirt and change that color to something else, or uh, you know, grab her skin and, and go back with, without having to re-lasso you know, everything in order to do that every time. It saves a lot of time and almost all professional colorists you know, use flatters or assistant to do this part. But uh, one thing that I hear from a lot of my colorist friends is that it's hard to find uh, flatters that can actually turn around work uh, correctly, especially if they're new. There's a lot of ways to flat pages and it's not always obvious the way it should be done. And so if you are flatting now and you get hired once by someone and then never hired again, chances are there's something that's not quite right about those pages. And and so and they're not always, colorists don't always have the time to go in and explain how to go in and fix everything, so they'll just find someone else. Um, it's a very common issue. So I wanted to make this video today to kind of show you a uh, right way to do it, or one of the right ways to do it. There are probably a lot of ways to do this, uh, but there's a lot of ways to do it incorrectly. Um, and so instead of just doing a whole new video for this, I'm just going to show you guys the lesson that I have in my course on flatting because, um, you know, I spent a lot, a lot of time on that and getting it right. So instead of reinventing the wheel here, we'll just show you, show you that there. But, um, uh, now you, you may see me reference, um, some of the previous lessons. Uh, there's especially the lesson on the lasso tool. So if you uh, mentioned that I had a lesson previous to this in the course that, um, that explains the uh, all the tools in Photoshop actually step by step. But um, so in the course, it's uh, so it's about right near the beginning somewhere. So here's the flatting course or the flatting lesson in the course. And let me pause this because I'm not quite ready to get that started yet. But um, so I'm going to let this play for you, and I'll come back in um, at the end and kind of we'll kind of wrap things up with sort of a uh, recap there. So I uh, hope you enjoy this and I'll see you guys at the end. All right, so um, in this lesson, we're going to start flatting. And you've heard me throw around that term probably. You may or may not know what it is, but f so we're gonna explain that. So flatting is really the first real step in, in uh, when you start separating all of the areas on a page into different colors. So, for example, for this panel here, we'll use we'll probably use these two as an example. Um, you know, the background would be one color, his skin would be one color, his hair would be one color, his jacket another color, you know, her skin another color, but they're all just one flat color. There's no um, there's no lighting, there's no shadows. It's strictly just flat color, so it's almost like you know if you ask a, a kid that's you know to color a coloring book and tell them to stay in the lines, you know that's really what flatting is. <laughs> it's not a particularly creative aspect to coloring. It's just it's really more of a technical aspect. And um, <clears throat> excuse me. So um, that's why a lot of colorists actually most colorists pay flatters to flat their work for them. So it's actually one way to sort of get your feet wet uh, in in the comics industry's flatting, and so we'll um, we'll we'll just jump right in here and, and start showing you how this works. So you know we talked about the lasso tool a few lessons ago. We'll be using that a lot. We'll be using the magic wand, the bucket tool. We'll be touching on all of those. So 
So if it was my job to flat this uh, page here, now you can see I've got the inks on their own layer on a multiply mode like we set up earlier. I've got flats on the layer below it. And this is the layer we're going to be working on uh, during this lesson. So let's see, we'll start with this guy here. So now in this case, uh, we've got these square panels. So I could go in here and just use the rectangular you know, selection tool, but uh, that's a little too easy and you're going to get some pages sometime where the lines don't even, they're not even straight. So, <laughs> so I'm going to use the lasso tool and I'm going to get pretty close here and I'm going to start and I'm going to hold down alt and I'm going to do what we did before. Now I'm going to hold down space bar while I'm do holding alt and you can actually drag the page around here. So hold down space bar and then you just close it off. And I'm going to fill that with a color. It doesn't really matter what color it is. I'm just going to pick something and pick blue. All right. So think of flatting as sort of cutting each panel into smaller and smaller pieces, starting with the biggest to the largest. So we've got the, the panel color. That's kind of step one. So now I'm going to trace the guy himself and everything else of him here in the panel. So. I'm just going to go ahead and do that. And again, I'm holding Alt to get these straight lines and then holding Spacebar 2 to be able to drag up. And I know that takes a little bit of practice, but uh, and I'm just going to just keep from having to go all the way down that way. We'll just go ahead and do up here. And now I'm going to add to this selection. I want to select all of his, everything else in the panel here. I'm holding down Alt the whole time. I'm sort of uh, using a combination of flat uh, or straight lines, I guess I should say, and the drawing tool and the lasso tool. Freehand mode, they call it. All right, so that's another color. And I'm just going to, doesn't really matter what it is. I'm just going to slide the thing, uh, slide the color picker over and fill it with the bucket tool. You, and I'm using the um, the uh, keyboard shortcuts, of course. So just pick a color, switch to the bucket, fill it, and keep on going. So now I'm going to start cutting it into smaller and smaller pieces. So I've got him here. I need to get his hair and his eyes and his teeth and all of that. So I'm just going to go up here, and now I'm going to trace his hairline. Sometimes you just have to make a guess like that. Now all of this is already separated, so I'm just going to go all the way around and pick another color and fill it. So again, you notice that I didn't actually trace this again because it's not necessary the way that my tools are set up. So, like I can go here, make a big loop around, switch my color again, and fill it. Because the separation here is already there and the separation here is already there. I don't want to trace it again. You're wasting my time. So and again I color pick that red and fill again. And then he's got a cell phone here. And we'll do like it grayish here. And we'll go ahead and change his skin color to something skinnish color so he doesn't look an alien anymore. <laughs> doesn't really matter. And let's see, the colors at this point are really irrelevant. So, so I'm using the lasso tool again, just freehand. Hold down shift to add the second part here. And kind of a rule of thumb about the color of eyes they really should never be pure white. I see that a lot. And eyes and teeth are never that white. Um, they actually tend to take on the color of the background a little bit. So that's why you know he's, it's a little bit blue here, actually. Um, and even within his pupils, I need to change change those. So and we'll do that and that. And let's see. Get a dark look here and fill it. Now again, I know what you're thinking. How are you doing this so fast? You know, it 
takes a little practice. So don't be concerned if you're not as fast as me because I've been using this same Wacom tablet for, like I said, about 12 years now. <laughs> so and again, I'm just sort of randomly grabbing colors here. I'm really not caring too much about what these colors are. But you can see I'm getting smaller and smaller into the details here. So I don't have to go and retrace anything. Um, so that, that panel's flatted. So if I wanted to go and and do her here, do her, that's what she said. No, uh, so I'm gonna go to my lasso tool. I'm gonna select this panel here. And we'll fill it with a different color. Just a little different from the other panel there, just to, uh, I want them to be different so I can grab one or the other with the magic wand tool if I wanted without them both getting grabbed there. And let's see, in this case, what would I do next? Probably this desk here and all this stuff. So I'm gonna go around here, selecting all of this. And again, I don't have to worry about the edge on the bottom because again, it's already there. It's already selected. So I just shifted this up just a little bit. And let's see. I need to separate these now from the desk. And if I was actually going to be flatting this book like for getting paid for it, then I would get really specific here and probably color these things different colors and whatnot. But we're just trying to get through this lesson here just so you guys can kind of see an example of how this works. And I'm just going over here and grabbing random colors and filling these. And let me get her now. So again, I'm getting the biggest um, pieces of the pie here first, all the big sections. And again, I just grab a color and fill it. And then I can get in close here to get her hair. Her shirt and this part is not particularly exciting I realize that I'm not a big fan of flatting personally but you gotta learn how to do it it's really good practice with the lasso you know so get her eyes here Again, these colors at this stage really don't matter a whole lot, or at all, actually. So, and I'm not going to go into this panel and do all of these uh, album covers, um, just for the sake of time. You guys kind of get the picture here. Um, just going and getting this background now, and that's why those tool settings we did earlier are so important because. If I, if I didn't, then I couldn't have filled that with a bucket tool like that. It had been going over her and everything. and So so we just flatted two panels in about, well, that was 10 minutes. So, um, you know, for most flatters, I would say it can take up to an hour, you know, to do a page, two hours if it's really complicated, uh, like this one. If I was a flatter, I would hate me um, if someone gave me all of this stuff to flat. But um, especially all of these albums, but that's part of it. Um, so 
I give you I, I give you guys an example here of uh, another uh, another page that uh, from this is from the nail biter hack slash crossover. So this is the inked work, of course, and here's the flats that I got um, back, and you, so you can kind of see how this would look. Everything is just one color, regardless of uh, there's no lighting, there's no shade, and all the lines, all the edges are clean. So if I get zoomed up here. You can see there's no white spaces in between the lines. Um, uh, it's it's all very clean, and, and that's why we, we kind of work the way that we do in going from big to small because it really doesn't leave you any room to leave any you know spare pixels under here. You know I've I've seen flatters before. Well, you know they'll think. Let me let me let me give you a bad example here. I'm gonna tell you what not to do. <laughs> Let me turn these off. You know, they'll get a pencil tool or something and let me just grab a color. And they'll go in and they'll, you know, do this number along for the whole thing and then they'll get the color on the outside here and they'll go in and, and do all this and like, yep, you know, that's that looks pretty good. The problem is all this little stuff under the lines, which really doesn't seem that important, is important when you get to the printer because sometimes if the ink lines are offset just a little bit, um, like if I were to take these this ink layer and move it just a few pixels, you can see those spare pixels starting to pop through here. Now this doesn't happen a lot, but it's been known to happen. <laughs> so you know, just because the lines are are let me get this backed up. Just because the lines are covering it up doesn't mean that you can have just garbage underneath. You know. It's real important that all of your um, all of your flats are very clean, and there's no white space anywhere. There's no um, these are all very clean edges. So what you don't want to do is is have sloppy flats because it'll probably be the last time you ever get used by that particular colorist if you're a flatter. <laughs> I, I talked to a colorist just. Um, uh, well, not last week. About uh, somebody said, "Yeah, I can flat for you," and they sent these pages back, and they looked terrible, um, and they were unusable. And he had to pay somebody else to flat it, or either flat it himself. So, um, but yeah, that's that's flatting. I mean, that's how that works. And the reason we do this is in a second we're gonna we're gonna learn this. But whenever you start flatting, or you actually start coloring, I tend to just duplicate this layer and um, uh, for the for the colors is I can go crazy, you know, rendering away at, at whatever I'm, I'm drawing, and if I don't like the way it looks or I want to change something, then I can always go back to my flat layer and basically start over, you know, um, and, uh, uh, you know, delete the, you know, what I did wrong and, and always go back to my flats to be able to um, start over or to do big changes, you know, like if, if I this is terrible rendering, but uh, but if I had rendered this and then decide that well I want this to be a little bit more red or something, then then I can go over here and you know start messing around with the sliders and I'm and I'm changing everything uh, because if I didn't have those flat layers there to go back, then you see what happens if I try to select you know using just the color, it's not getting everything. You know it's it's getting it's leaving all of these edges and and that, that's no good at all. So that's really the importance of of flatting. And so you're, if you think about it, you're just you're separating all of the elements, and that's what si why some people call it color separations. You'll hear it heard that called that term. And so so again, it's a very important. All right, that about wraps it up. So if you like the video today, click the like button or subscribe to the channel. If you haven't subscribed, I try to do these videos as often uh, as I can. Uh, and if you want to see a link to the uh, course, there's a link in the description. If you want to check that out, there is a free trial, uh, two lessons there, one on color theory and one on flatting now. So if you want to check that out, just click the link below. Uh, no credit card, no PayPal. Just sign up and check out those free lessons uh, if you want. So see you guys in the next one.